Hi, it's Bumbleberry. I am sorry to report that I recorded this first part of the episode, and uh, basically what happened is, um, it didn't record. So I have seen all of this before, <laughs> at least up until where I'm going to stop it now. So hopefully that doesn't deter you from the awesomeness, but just know if I'm not as enthusiastic as usual, it is because I am silently screaming on the inside like, why curses, curses, how could you? But Matthew, thankfully, is a super sweetie pie. So it won't be that hard to watch him go through his stuff again. Um, he is, of course, like absolutely adorable. So let's let's give him another chance. We are going to be seduced by the sweetheart of the bunch, Matthew with Baby Blues. Well, if you say so. I hope Sam and Eric didn't make you upset. It's okay. Uh, I did hit Sam. <laughs> Oops. Um... Hmm. Oh, I have an idea. What's your idea, Matthew? Oh, he's so cute. Wait for it. Wait for it. Is he trying to do a magic trick? Ta-da! Ah! <laughs> um, what is that exactly? He smiled as if to wave it off. But when he opened his eyes and saw what he was holding, his face froze in shock. Oh, and guys, 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 look, I figured out how to do this. Ah, so you can see the squirrel. Oh my gosh, he is seriously holding a butcher's knife. That is rather exciting. Wait a second. What did I just make? This, this is... Uh... What he produced from his pocket was a creepy-looking doll. Ah, what is that? <laughs> I'm not sure. Oh my gosh, that's horrifying. His face paled considerably, and he dropped it onto the floor, scooting away from it frantically. Get it away from me! It might be possessed by a demon or something! <laughs> you are a demon, aren't you? <laughs> but isn't he a demon himself? That's not what I wanted to make! I just wanted to surprise you with a stuffed animal or just something to cheer you up. That looks like it came straight out of a horror movie. Oh, it's okay. I think it's cute. He slumped his shoulders and looked down at his feet. I'm just re-showing this so that you can remember who he is, really. Uh, that's okay. You don't have to look so dejected. Um, I'm gonna keep it. But it looks so creepy. Eh, it's a thought that counts, right? You wanted to cheer me up, after all. I picked up the doll and looked at it closely. Sure, it looked pretty weird at first, but it could be cute if looked at from a certain angle. I smile. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. It's good to see you smiling, even though the thing I made still kind of creeps me out. <laughs> Such is life. Anyway, you should come with me to the dining room. We're almost finished with the food, and, well, I don't mean to brag, but we're pretty decent chefs. I believe you. So what are we waiting for? Let's celebrate and dig in! I agree. Finally, I'm starving. Instantly, Matthew and Sam began to stuff themselves with the food on the table. I noticed James' eye twitching in irritation, so I stifled my incoming laugh. <laughs> really, you two? You're both acting like pigs. Oh, let them have a little freedom, James. It's not like we've eaten recently, either. I'm sure they've been starving. Still, uh, that's no excuse for stuffing their faces like backyard swine. I almost couldn't hold it in. Look at her face, I thought that was cute. So I didn't... Hearts exploding everywhere. <laughs> I couldn't hold it in my laughter anymore. As I laughed, Matthew and Sam looked my way, faces stuffed. Is something funny? What are you laughing at? I stopped to catch my breath. I leaned over the table and took a few breaths before replying. You both are so funny. Their faces turned a slight pink <laughs> before they looked away from me and swallowed. Look at Matthew's face versus Sam's. Perfect. Sh shut up! We're not funny. We're hungry. Well, we're, we're glad that we made you laugh. Aww. Shut up, Matthew! What? I'm just saying. <laughs> See, James, it's entertainment for her. <sighs> James is like, I'm so disappointed in her. Um, They were funny to me. At least they enjoyed the food. And so I'm eating my nom-noms as well. Getting my nutrition. Mm-hmm-hmm-hmm. <laughs> Just for kicks and giggles, let's say they're in my head. Or their head. Whoever's head. <laughs> she <laughs> poked Matthew on the forehead, making him stare cross-eyed at her finger. Uh, hello to you too? Seems real to me. 
They're not imaginary. Oops. They saw right through that lie. What? It was no use. It was no use. Alright, so I abandoned my lady loves to help Matthew with cooking. Yay! Big parties! I walked into the kitchen and instantly looked over at Matthew, who was quickly slicing up strawberries and placing them into a nearby bowl. I looked over his shoulder to watch. Matthew didn't seem to mind, so I asked him a question. What are you making? I'm going to make a large batch of strawberry cupcakes. These what? strawberries are going to be the top pieces. <gasps> Yum, that sounds delicious. Can I help? Yeah, I kind of hoped you would. <laughs> Can you start by making the batter for the cupcakes? I put the ingredients and some directions on the counter over there. I nodded before heading over to another counter where a string of ingredients and a small note card of directions sat at the ready. I smiled and began to work, mixing the ingredients and pouring the batter into the cupcake tins to bake. I had to admit I made a little bit of a mess, but I felt like the cupcakes were still fine. I am not great in the kitchen, BT dubs, so if you give me ingredients and like a recipe, I can usually be useful. But sometimes it turns out scary, like my grandpa's cup or I made him a checkerboard cake and it was intense. As I turned to face Matthew, I noticed Matthew's red face. I tilted my head before he walked over and moved his hand a bit towards my face. He stopped, however, looking to me for permission. Do I have something on my face? Excuse me. Matthew continued to move his hand towards me, gently brushing a finger over my cheek. My senses tripled, feeling his finger wipe over a small stain of powder and cream that had landed on my face. You, uh, got a stain. Oh. <laughs> Matthew's finger was ginger and timid, um, wiping the stain off with as little contact as possible. Lightning shot through my body at each wipe, running, my down, running down my spine and jolts. I closed my eyes, unconsciously leaning into his touch and naturally wanting more. However, Matthew pulled his hand away, causing me to open my eyes and look at him. He was biting his lower lip and had pulled his hand to his chest. S sorry, um, I got it all? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh... Thank you. Matthew quickly shook his head and grinned his goofy grin at me before oh, his smile is like creepy but adorable. He began to make another appetizer. Wondering, I was wondering if what I saw was real. We have the party crasher of the century here. Um, I would say get out of my house, but let's try this. He laughed wildly, staring at me in disbelief. <laughs> whoa, whoa! Who is the bitch out of her cage? What is this? A reverse harem or something? <laughs> <laughs> He's like so excited. Uh, he grinned at me evilly, walking close to me. Uh, duck, duck. Oh, <laughs> man. Oh, A good. quick one. I'm liking you more and more. Wouldn't it be weird if Malix was like one of the options to end up with? Back off, Malix! Thank Don't you. start acting tough, you pathetic excuse of a demon! You need more protection than her. Shut up! <gasps> oh. Did I make little Matthew cry? <gasps> Why don't you just grow up here? Why don't you grow some sensitivity? Take some training in it or something. Enough, Malix. I like her too. She's like, I'm not dealing with this nonsense. Okay, let's go find one of our incubi friends now that we have made them a little snack to fight the big scary guy. I rushed back and grabbed a second for them dish to hunt down one of the boys. I looked down each hall trying to find one of the incubi wandering so that I wouldn't have to go through each individual room finding them. I pursed my lips in irritation. Where the heck are they? I sighed, knowing that I would have to search for them in each room. I quickly turned and headed back to the dining room one last time. When I arrived, I gasped. Oh, I can't speak. Matthew, oh, he looks sad, was crouched near the kitchen doorway, peering into it as if a rat had gotten loose in the pantry, and he was the stalking exterminator. Matthew? <laughs> I quickly shut my mouth and pressed my lips together in silence, confused but fearful as to why I had to be quiet. I tiptoed to him. He was crouching by the entrance to the kitchen. His gaze had and head moved across the side of the kitchen, still trying to find whatever he was looking for. He's in there. <laughs> what? Matthew's face was seriously fearful and intense. Who was freaking him out this much? My mind, however, instantly pinned down the person in my conclusion. Malix. Malix. Why did he come back, and why was he in my kitchen? I started to freak out, remembering the fear I had felt the first time we had met. However, I wasn't sure. Where were the others if it was Malik's? I lost sight of him, but I quickly found him and cornered him in there. I know he's in there. <laughs> Who's in there? That 
fluffy killer thing. Fluffy killer thing? I bit my lip, suppressing a laugh. Once I swallowed my laughter down, I let out a sigh. You mean your cute bunny doll? Yeah, that thing. Wait, it's not cute! Um, kind of is. Matthew instantly regretted not whispering and covered his mouth. I couldn't help but giggle. What's he doing in the kitchen? Matthew turned to me with an expression of utmost seriousness. Something told me that what he said would be cute and funny, but I decided to bite my tongue gently not to laugh, no matter what. I don't know. I failed to keep a hold of myself and started to giggle again. The thought of a doll doing anything but sitting there made me giggle. Matthew tried to hush me, waving his arms frantically to keep me quiet. Matthew, Simon's a doll. It can't do anything. You named him? <laughs> He's outraged. Of course, Simon Tabby. Cute, isn't it? Matthew let out some sort of defeated whine before turning back to the kitchen, trying to find Simon from where he was. I placed our food on the table and looked as well. So, what's your plan of attack? Well, I plan to make my way through the kitchen as quietly as I can, and hopefully not get stabbed. <laughs> True story. That's a good thing to live your life by. Sounds simple. Matthew nodded in agreement before finally moving from his spot and tiptoeing into the kitchen. <laughs> I love that animation. I stood there, unsure of whether or not I should follow suit. Hello, let's join the hunt. We have a bunny to find. I didn't know why I was up for this, but I followed along. The small, adventurous side of me was very happy with my decision, but another side of me was questioning me, asking why I did that. Matthew slowly walked through the kitchen, scanning the cupboards and surfaces with a meticulous glare. Nice spelling. It was both amusing and slightly frightening to see how serious he could be. Do all of your toys get out of control like this? No, it's just this one! I don't know why. All my other toys are okay. Other toys? Matthew nodded, stopping his search to look at That's what I do. Uh, make toys. I made them for my mother all the time back in the Abyssal Plains. To help her cope with her position. What position, darling? Her position? She's the fourth wife of my birth father. Each of us have a different mother, and all of them, except for Damien's, are queens. My mom, though, hates sharing, so I distracted her with toys. That's really nice. I don't know what to say. A demon with multiple wives seems natural, but I guess it was because I was a human I felt a twinge of disgust run through my veins, nonetheless. Still, it was adorable how Matthew tried to cheer his mom up with his abilities. I was then suddenly reminded of my grandfather and how he made toys all the time for kids. Matthew's power to make small toys instantly would have been so useful to my grandfather. Together we shall become CEO of this company. Finally, I want to be CEO so bad. Let's keep looking for Simon. Matthew nodded briefly before joining in. Felt like I was in a comedy mystery looking for a child's toy instead of a murder weapon. Come on out, creepy thing. <laughs> His name is Simon. Matthew ignored my statement and began slowly opening the cupboards, sifting through the inside contents. I decided to follow suit, starting at the opposite end of the kitchen. Matthew, what do we do if we find him? We stick him back in my pocket. And, uh... Yeah, because that's good. Something with a knife. Put it as close to your genital. I'm sorry. Words. Uh, I looked to Matthew, waiting for him to finish his reply. However, he kept his eyes to the ground, trying to answer my question and remaining in thought. I continued to search the cupboards, unsure now if this plan was going to go anywhere. Why was I even doing this? Simon Tabby was a... <laughs> <laughs> what the... Matthew and I scanned the kitchen frantically, searching for the source of the laugh. I knew that thing was evil! <laughs> Suddenly everything went black. Ah! Who turned out the lights? Uh-oh. Doctor Who reference. I gripped to the nearby counter, not wanting to hit anything or fall in the darkness. There were no windows, so the room was almost completely pitch black. I could hear skittering across the floor, like a rat trying to escape with cheese in its mouth. I instantly jumped in fear before suddenly being pushed to the ground. Ah! Watch out! I felt myself hit the ground with a body on top of me. Two hands were slammed besides my head onto the tile floor, stopping the person above me from crushing me. Hey, are you okay? Matthew? Yeah, I am. I stared up at him, letting the situation sink in. We were looking for a doll, and now we were on the ground. What broke my thoughts was a flash of gold running across Matthew's eyes. I could feel the heat radiate from his body, but the air was tense and his body was almost shaky. 
Matthew, are you okay? I... I, um... Uh-oh. I heard him gulp answering my question. He wasn't okay. I could tell, but he wasn't moving. Matthew? S sorry. I, uh... Soon a golden glow covered Matthew's eyes. I expected to feel warmth in my body from an upcoming spell, but I felt nothing. Something was wrong. I... I need you to... I need you to push me off. I, uh... I... From the sound of his voice, he was desperate to get up and off of me. Why couldn't he move, though? Then it hit me. He needs sexual... Uh, motion. I, I do. But I... Matthew shut his eyes to try and hide his golden gaze from me. He didn't want to take my energy? Why, was he ashamed to? Also, just want to add in, I totally think this game would be fun to have kind of like a Rocky Horror-esque thing. You know what I mean? Where it's like, right before their line and you know what they're going to say, you say something like really dirty or something, and then so it's out of context. I don't know, maybe I'm five years old, but I feel like this game lends it very easily. <laughs> um, hi, let's kiss him. He needs his energy, after all. I was willing to give it. I gently grabbed Matthew's face and tilted his head to angle with mine. Leaning in closer to him, I brought my face and lips up to his and kissed him deeply. I didn't know if this would help, but it was how he got energy before. I shut my eyes, waiting for the draining feeling to reappear in my body. Matthew didn't move, nor did I feel energy drain from me. I opened my eyes and saw Matthew staring wide-eyed at me, but unmoving. He was unsure of what to do, and I had silenced him in confusion. I pulled away and spoke. I want to give you some of my energy. You've used a lot of it, and I'm sure that the energy you took from me was only used for healing. Let me I, 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 uh, mean, I really, I don't. Matthew, if you don't want my energy, just tell me. But I'm offering it to you if you do. All of a sudden, I felt that familiar feeling of warmth run through my body once again. I felt my body slightly heat up as Matthew wrapped an arm around my body and pulled it tighter to his. Matthew grew a lustful gaze before bringing a hand up to cup the back of my neck. Oh, hello. Before I knew it, Matthew pulled me into a gentle but passionate kiss. Heat erupted through my body as his kiss slowly and almost timidly got deeper. Matthew kept an arm around my waist while I rested my hands on his chest. And, new secret... Hello, Matthew. <laughs> oh, he's so sad. He's like, I don't know. I feel like it's really nice that the guys, they don't want to take my energy. You know what I mean? Or at least, you know, after that first encounter. I'm sure Eric would be like, come, my young Padawan. But I think he secretly didn't want to do that. But anyway, Matthew seems sweet. Back into the groove. The energy from my body was slowly draining in the kiss, making me feel light and warm. It's almost pitiful how comfortable and how willing I was in this situation. Still, I held no regrets. I was enjoying every bit of this kiss. Matthew was full of surprises. As childish as he, <laughs> as childish as he was, he definitely was proving to be a man while he was kissing me. Matthew wasn't forceful, but his kiss was deep and passionate, and it felt almost magical. It was how I imagined the first kiss to be like, except with energy drain. Soon, though, the energy drain stopped and Matthew gently pulled his face away to end the kiss. I stared up at him as we both panted for air. I had never kissed like that before, and I was so lost in the moment that I had forgotten how to breathe. Matthew moved a strand of my hair from my face behind my hair. Ear. <laughs> Eyes still full of desire. Matthew stared silently at me, unsure of what to say. However, I could tell that he was full, yet yearning. I could feel the hold of his mind-altering spell fade away, but I still felt hot. Something told me that I wanted more, but at the same time I wasn't sure if I truly did want to give any more. Hey, let's keep, let's keep going. I opened, I opened the opportunity, and I was enjoying it as much as he was. I wanted more, and I was going to let him keep going. I wanted to keep going. I leaned up and kissed him again. Matthew gasped against my lips, but continued to kiss back. I could feel him pull on the tail of my bow, releasing it and following his hand off from around my neck. He moved the ribbon to his pocket before gently unbuttoning the top two buttons of my blouse. The desire in my body drove me insane, forcing a moan to escape my lips as he ran kisses from my lips down to my exposed neck. As he began to ravish my neck and shoulder in hot kisses, I leaned my head back and let a pe pleasureful sigh escape my lips. 
Matthew was ruthless in his passionate kisses on my skin. He didn't stop touching and kissing me, making more moans and gasps run out of my mouth into the open air. He may have been full, but he was as hot as I was. I couldn't even comprehend how much time we spent making out. I was so lost in the pleasure that I didn't care. Call it sinful, but I didn't care. I loved it. His touch, his kiss, his heat. I desired it beyond anything at that moment, even as he lowered his kisses down my chest to just above my bra. My heart was beating wildly in my chest. Something about Matthew intrigued me immensely, but something made my heart quicken for him. It couldn't have been love, but it was too passionate to be lust. What was it? However, I began to feel dizzy, seeing the ceiling start to spin almost wildly. I gripped Matthew's shoulders, trying to signal him to stop, but my mind faded to black before I could let out another sound. Oh, I didn't care. I was blacked out. I mean, honey, you gotta care that a little bit. Um, I felt warm and fuzzy in the darkness. I never knew indulging in that kind of passion would be that good. I now just waited to awaken, hopefully in a good way, with cupcakes. <laughs> my eyes eventually fluttered open, adjusting to the sight around me. I felt familiar silks underneath me, letting me know that I was in my bed. I slowly sat up, stretching from the tiredness that still lingered. I felt a very soft pain on my neck and shoulders, and I could feel my swollen lips pul pulse gently and healing. However, when I looked down at my body, I saw my shirt had been pulled back up and rebuttoned as if nothing had happened between me and Matthew. I was just missing my ribbon. Before I turned to get out of bed, though, I spotted my ribbon on the pillow beside the one I slept on. It was tied around Simon Tabby in a nice bow with a small note attached to it. I can't believe he caught him. I gently slipped the note from the tie and opened it to read. I, I'm really, really, really sorry. I, I didn't mean for it to go that far. Please forgive me? Oh, of course I do. I stared at the note, letting a small smile grace my lips. He went too far? I enjoyed it a lot. It was cute, though, to imagine him thanking me for something we both did and enjoyed. I brought the note to my chest, <laughs> letting the memories of our meeting flood my mind. I indulged myself, too, Matthew. I looked at the time out of curiosity. Large white numbers on my phone showed 5.31 p.m. Yikes. Four hours of being knocked out, and I still feel tired. Well, you didn't know how long you were making out, either. Um, I think this is where we're going to leave it for now, though. We got some smooches in. We got reintroduced to Matthew. There's a cutest little face in the land and the funnest little U-shaped smile. Um, let me know what you think of him so far. We're probably going to finish him up next time. And then after that, we've got Sam and Damien. Oh, yeah. So we'll take care of that. And I hope you enjoyed chasing a little stuffed bunny as much as I did. Stay sweet, and I'll see you next time.